I know you look at the wrong person because you don't want to look somebody and say, there's got to be proof. Yeah. 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 I'm going to clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. Yeah. 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 I captured here, uh, this is uh, about 32 years of following uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is about 32 years of following of the birth of the church that was in a little room that was smaller than this, that was hotter than this, where there was no air conditioning, where there was 120 folk crammed in that little room. And not only were they in that little room for about an hour and a half, but they were in that little room that didn't move for 10 days and 10 nights. Look at somebody and say, Lord have mercy. So you think you hot in here. They were there for 10 days and 10 nights in that room. And the reason why they were there and they weren't going to move is because they were waiting for the Lord to move. The same to me, I don't care how bad the situation is, how hot it gets, how bad it gets yeah. when you're waiting for a move of the Lord, nothing else matters. Yeah. You're going to sit there, you're going to wait, yeah. you're going to sit there until God comes through yeah. because you know that you need God to bless you, you need God to come through and intercede for you. Everybody say amen. amen. So as Paul is composing this letter and writing to the church of Ephesus, he was also writing to the Galatian church at the same time. Uh, and he was encouraging both churches, wrote two letters in the space of a month and a half while he was in jail. It's incredible how you can bless other folk when you're going through rough times yourself. Amen. How you Amen. can help somebody, how you can lift somebody, Amen. how you can encourage somebody when you're going through it yourself. Amen. And you just think at some of the times that you help folks and bless folk the most were not the times that you were riding high on the mountain. Sometimes you made your biggest contributions, blessed folk the largest, when you were going through some of the most difficult days of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. You looked at them and said, I don't have much, but I'll share what I got. Amen. You looked at them and said, it might not be much, it's not a whole lot, but you can have what I have. If we're going to struggle, let's struggle together, and we're going to get through together. Clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. I look at the word of God, uh, this epistle is addressed uh, to the Ephesians. Uh, and in particular, it represents a true gift, uh, an inspiring word to the people of God. And what it should do is uplift every one of us uh, that has a love for God. It should uplift every one of us that wants to give God glory uh, and praise. Uh, Paul opens this letter uh, by explaining not bad things. It wasn't an issue that Paul was addressing. It wasn't a time that Paul was saying, you all messed up, and I got to write this letter to correct you. And we see that in the word of God as he writes uh, to the church of Corinth and 1st and 2nd Corinthians, where that church was just going through. That church, they were suing one another. They were talking about one another. They were treating each other bad. They were just going in and out and doing all kinds of bad things. But that's not the story of this church uh, at Ephesus. Paul uh, told these people uh, that how blessed they really were. Paul says, I'm writing this letter not to correct you, but I'm writing this letter and this epistle to share with you how blessed you really are. Uh, it's a good thing you get good news. So he said, not only how blessed uh, you really are, but God shared with them how much the Lord loved them, how God chose them, and how they were accepted in the beloved Jesus Christ. Uh, it's incredible. No matter what you've done uh, in your life, God still loves you. No matter what you've done in your life, God still accepts you. Uh, there's some folk that say, I can't accept you. I can't embrace you. I can't deal with you and be with you until you fix yourself up. You got to get here and then here before we can be friends. But that's not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was your friend when he was broke.